Hello and welcome to this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is uh, episode number 18. Uh, I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and I'm joined by Ralph May here today to talk about uh, domain fronting. So Ralph is going to walk us through um, like what is domain fronting and then also show us an awesome demo of how to actually set up domain fronting with PowerShell Empire. So Ralph, take it away, sir. All right, so uh, yeah, domain fronting. This has been a pretty hot topic recently and um, it's been around actually for a while but uh, let's get into it. So uh, first kind of what is domain fronting? So uh, it's really a technique to mask your C2 traffic. Um, you're gonna be able to mask your DNS host name, be able to mask your C2 location. Um, and the thing that really this brings along is uh, companies trust for uh, public CDNs. Um, and most companies trust uh, legitimate traffic from a CDN like uh, Amazon and Google. And um, you know that really helps with uh, masking your traffic. Uh, and just to let everyone know, domain fronting is really not that new. Uh, it's actually been talked about for a while, but uh, recently in uh, you know the red team or pen testing industry, it's really kind of caught in the hold on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's been used for a lot of other things, um, you know, both malicious and um, just ways of circumventing um, any kind of a protection. So threat. when so you're kind of when you're talking about masking C two traffic, you you mean like the uh the ability for somebody who's watching your, your C2 channel from a network perspective, uh, seeing where it's actually yeah. going on the internet. Yeah, it's really, it's really uh, a way to mask at the identifying marks of a maybe malicious actor or some kind of uh, connection that you don't recognize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the uh, whitelist and blacklist out there, they always go for known good, known bad type deals. And uh, this allows you to get your CT, C2 traffic marked as known good. Um, and uh, that really uh, limits the ability for um, organizations to effectively block uh, the C2 traffic, which is what we're trying to do. We're also trying to hide the uh, hide in the, uh, the noise of other legitimate traffic on these uh, networks, right? So mm -hmm. um, Domain fronting kind of works. This diagram is kind of to show you what we're going going to be doing. And in short, when we put a beacon on uh, one of these uh, systems or a uh, payload of any sort, uh, we're going to make a request out for a, uh, a DNS, you know, to get an IP address back. With domain fronting, what we can do is we can actually make a request for a domain that we don't own, but that is part of the CDN network that we're utilizing. In this example, we're using images.businessweek.com. We don't own that domain. But when we make the request, we will get back an IP address, and for our example, for CloudFront, right? CloudFront's got IP addresses all over the place and different uh, entry nodes all over the world, right? When that system gets the IP address back, it's going to go to the IP address of CloudFront. Well, when we send that request, we're going to include a host header. In that host header, we're going to describe a uh, URL for a CloudFront asset. This is how the CDN identifies where to route the traffic inside of the CDN. The CDN doesn't care what IP address you enter into. What it does care is the host header so it knows where to route it on the other side. This is kind of the masking part. So as we make a request, we're going to see businessweek.com is a DNS request. Okay, that's not a malicious site. And then when it hits CloudFront, it's going to know, because of the host header in our payload, where to route that traffic. And that traffic is going to get routed to Empire over here. So um, this is kind of just a quick example of you know, how to write, route this traffic within domain fronting. So when it comes to like creating your, your payloads for this, um, can you go back to the, the uh, diagram real quick? So when it comes to creating your, your um your payloads, uh, when it comes to like the DNS piece of it, do you have to do that, that DNS piece within the payload itself or do you do that like offline beforehand and, and figure out what, like where the cloud for an IP is and then craft your yeah, payload so based off of that? Yeah, so this will be in the payload, uh, okay. just.business.com. And that's just the uh, site that's going to request to get an IP address. Mm -hmm. But also in that uh, payload will be this host header, which is going to know how to route it on the CDN. Gotcha. So if somebody's analyzing like from a, both a DNS and like an IP level, like they'll see the DNS request and it looks like legit traffic uh, requesting yep. access to that, that host. Very cool. Continue, sir. So uh, let's get into a uh, tool demo here. And uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, quickly how to set it up uh, on CloudFront and then also um, how to set up Empire to uh, accept that uh, 
they love it. So. Awesome. All right, so what we're gonna need to do uh, to do pretty much domain fronting is we're gonna need a CDN service. Uh, right now, I actually have uh, a CDN set up, and I'm gonna show you guys how to create one as well. Uh, this is using uh, AWS's uh, CloudFront, so you're gonna need an AWS account for this to work. But um, the big thing is, is that uh, to create a new domain front, we're just gonna create a new CDN asset. So we'll go over here to get started, and we're gonna give it a domain name, right? Um, in this example, I'm just gonna do test.pondcompany.com. This is a domain I've already set up. Uh, for the origin path, we're not gonna need to set this up, but you know, you could put a forward slash here. Uh, we're gonna leave origin ID uh, to custom test, leave all this uh, TLS stuff set up. We're gonna say match viewer for the policy, so whether we're visiting an uh, HTTP or HTTPS, it's gonna route that traffic. Um, and then down here, we're going to leave your policy to both, and we're going to go ahead and allow all the HTTP methods. Um, and the big thing we want here is to forward all the headers. We really don't want the CloudFront to be caching anything because it may be impeding the ability for our payload to communicate. So we're going to forward all the cookies. Uh, we're going to forward all cache-based information. We're going to make sure that smoothing and all this other uh, caching um, abilities are turned off. Um, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. None of these distribution settings need to be changed. We're going to go ahead and create distribution. What's going to happen is it's going to start building this new distribution, and we're going to get this domain name here at uh, .cloudfront.net. This could take up to 35. I've even seen it go up to an hour to totally propagate it across the network. That's why I've already got one built for our demo here, okay. um, and this was set up in the exact same way. The only difference is the domain name. Um, CloudFront automatically spits out this, and it's randomly generated. Nice. All right. So the uh, the next part of this is we're going to go ahead and set up Empire to uh, create a payload to um, interact with uh, domain fronting. All right. So over here, I have uh, Empire actually already installed and uh, set up. And I have my listener built. And I'm going to show you the quick options in here. Uh, just a heads up, you're going to need the new version of Empire to uh, use domain fronting. Uh, you can also do domain fronting with uh, Cobalt Strike as well. So um, under listeners, I already have one set up. And I'm going to go uh, on info cloud front. So the big things that you need here is that under default profile, we're going to need to add the option for the host header. Uh, and the way that you do that in Empire uh, is you just add this line right here, host colon, and then that DNS name that uh, AWS spit back out for, for the CloudFront, right? You just add it onto the default or, profile. Yep, adding it onto the default profile. And what that allows uh, the payload to do is uh, it adds that in the request so that when the CDN IP address receives that, it will know where to route it to inside of the CloudFront CDN. The next thing that I changed here is this uh, host. And this is where we're making that DNS request, or DNS request, excuse me, to images.businessweek.com. Now, there's tons of other DNS or sites that are hosted in, in um, AWS's CloudFront, and there's a couple different ways to look them up. Um, but you don't have to use this one. There's a bunch of other stuff out there. And that's really about it for setting the uh, listener settings. To so, so to be clear, you have to have a, a host that utilizes the CDN to work. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So not just any <laughs> website on the, any website that's using Business Suite. Um, an easy way to find out, if you do an NS lookup on that, you'll see that it resolves back to C names that include CloudFront.net. Gotcha. Um, so that's a kind of quick way to find out. So now that we have our listener set up, uh, all we really need to do is uh, create a payload real quick. And uh, I'll use just a quick launcher. And uh, we'll say we want to do PowerShell because it be a Windows system. And we'll give it our, it's going to give our base 64 encoded PowerShell. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Uh, I already have a Windows system uh, online right now. This is just a basic server 2012 box. And 
all we'll have to do is paste this in here. Go back over to our empire. And we got our initial beacon. So nice. the thing to uh, take away from this is that uh, one, all the traffic that they're going to be seeing from that system is actually going to be going to cloudfront.net. Mm -hmm. um, and that DNS request is going to look legitimate. Um, now, CloudFront is masking between, so they won't know uh, where the actual C2 server is or Empire is actually running. Um, and you can move that on the other side. You can modify the settings uh, for CloudFront as well. So all of the traffic, all the Empire traffic now is being technically like proxied through the CDN. Exactly, exactly. It's going through the CDN and depending on where the beacon or um, payload is ran will will depend on what IP address it picks up, you know, depending on where it is mm -hmm. uh, in the world. So uh, it routes back through the CDN to get back to you. Um, definitely helps with masking traffic. Now, um, something I didn't show here, but you can absolutely do is you can also implement SSL with this. And the benefit of that is that when we're just doing port 80 traffic, you can see my host header, right? And you'll know if somebody who is watching uh, cleverly would know that this host header or this uh, I, or DNS name, excuse me, does not match up to what Business Week would normally be going to. But if you use SSL, you can, what happens is the host header actually gets wrapped inside of the SSL packet. So now to detect that difference, you would have to be SSL man in the middle. Gotcha. So. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the quick demo there. Awesome. Great stuff. All right. So back over here. So, so do you have uh, any anything that you would recommend blue teams do to try to try to look for this, try to block it? Yeah, so as far as um, detection, uh, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily an easy task. But there definitely are some ways to prevent it entirely or to detect it. Um, so one of the ways is that if you're running a proxy, uh, and this has actually been brought up um, by Mudge, is that um, you won't, it'll end up dropping the packet because of the way host headers work for like a uh, enterprise proxy. Now there is ways to get around it. It just really depends if you're man in the middling that traffic or not uh, and inspecting it. Um, and that also depends if your payload is using SSL or not. So, um, you know, for our blue team, the things that I would recommend is one, watching traffic, uh, you know, to see if we have different host headers inside of that traffic. Um, and then two, looking for indicators of uh, compromise other than just the traffic itself um, going in and out of your network. Um, relying solely on the fact that a domain is trusted or not trusted or an IP address is known or not known um, is kind of the Achilles heel of what makes this uh, so powerful mm -hmm. and uh, other indicators within your, uh, you know, on your systems, you know, just the fact that it's running PowerShell and other things like that, uh, those can go a long way to helping you get detection more than just the, uh, the traffic that was, uh, you know, that you may have saw across your uh, firewall. So absolutely. Um, is, so do you do you know if um, like so you showed PowerShell Empire and you mentioned that Cobalt Strike also has domain fronting uh, abilities. Uh, what about like Meterpreter or any other frameworks? Uh, I haven't used Meterpreter for domain fronting, uh, and I'm not sure if you can change the host header. And it may be possible. Just haven't uh, dove into that. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, definitely something that uh, if if the feature isn't there, it probably will be coming in the near future. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. And you, I see you've included a, a few additional links for if people want to uh, check out some more info on this. Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, Cobalt Strikes talked about this. Uh, Mudge just talked about it. Um, Whisper Systems actually used it for um, getting around censorship in uh, countries, you know, like China, for example. Um, there's uh, been some actual deep dives into how uh, domain fronting works uh, much further than what I've described. Um, the Tor Meek project was actually one of the uh, original projects to really kind of uh, utilize domain fronting to mass traffic on the Tor network. And then uh, last but not least, uh, there have been articles even back in 2012 that were written about doing domain fronting to bypass GoGo and Flight and stuff like that. <laughs> nice. So 
I mean, people have been talking about this for a while, and uh, this has been seen in active use by um, APT teams. So, um, I mean, it's definitely out there, and I think we're going to continue to see more and more use of it. Awesome. Well, Ralph, thank you so much for joining me today, and, and thanks for you know putting putting together this episode. Um, I you know I'm sure we'll probably end up doing some more episodes in the future. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks again, and uh, thanks everyone for watching. Um, if you want to uh, follow us on Twitter, I'm at DaftTac on Twitter, and Ralph is at RalphTE01. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Have a great week.